I'm Donna Cooper, and I'm the Associate Director for Career Development and the Center for Career and Leadership Development. When we changed our name, I had to put a post-it note by the phone so that I could remember what all of our names said, because one day I picked it up and all I could say was career. Well, I guess that was the right thing to say instead of what? But anyway, today we are going to be talking about resumes and cover letters. I enjoy looking at resumes and cover letters. I've had lots of students tell me that they are frightening, scary, uh, dreaded, and uh, all other kinds of adjectives have been given to me, and I understand it, I get that. So anyway, what I'm gonna do today with this session, and I've got the timer set so that I'll be sure and leave time for questions. I will tell you, um, like I said in the other session, if you have questions that you just want to email to me, my email address is donna-cooper at utc.edu. And I have a philosophy. There are no stupid questions, just the ones that we have in our mind and we never ask. They probably could save us a lot of work. They could save us a lot of confusion. And even if you hear me give examples in this session of resumes I've seen, because I critique a lot, um, I will never tell you a name and I will never tell you enough information that you could go, oh, that was my roommate. Because believe me, the things I share, everybody pretty much does in the beginning. So I'm going to share my screen now. And as you come up with questions and things, you can put them in the chat. But because I'm making sure that I limit how long I talk so that there's more time for you guys to talk, I'll get to the chat after I do the PowerPoint. Okay, are you ready to go on an adventure into resumes and cover letters? And you will come back alive, I promise. You may also hear me scream if it works, because sometimes technology and I, oh, it's working, yay! Technology and I uh, don't always agree, so uh, sometimes it can be very difficult. Okay, guys, so you'll notice the title, Producing High Quality Resumes and Cover Letters. Anybody can do a resume. Anybody can do a cover letter. Um, we want you to stand out. So hence the title. Now, you've, some of you have already been a part of our earlier sessions. We put this together because we want you to have more, not less, but more. We want you to have more information and how this experience in college can turn into the career, uh, that you want to start might not be the one you finish because you could find new information along the way that leads you into another adventure. We want it to be something more that will enhance your professional development. We believe our students are amazing. We want everybody else to see that too. So we want to help you be amazing, present amazingly. So we also have a goal that we will provide responses to your questions and examples of how the information we share can be used. It, it's no good if it just sounds awesome, but there's no clue in how to use it. Also, the goal is that it helps you move forward confidently. And that doesn't mean you have all the information you need. It could mean you know who you can talk to you know where you can go, you know the people that go, you know, we get lonely if we don't get questions. You know, email me, I haven't had a nice email in days or something like that. It's okay, that's why we're here. Um, and I was thinking before the session started, everybody's like, I wanna be face-to-face, -face. I wanna be face-to-face. -face. I'm having a better time being face-to-face -face on Zoom because I can see your whole face. Uh, at this point, if we're all wearing masks, we're basically eye to eye. We're not really face to face. That's a personal opinion. So um, I like to be able to talk to people, see names. And again, I don't mind if you don't take yourself off the screen that just has your name because I'll get to remember the name. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay. High quality, what makes it high quality? 
high quality is when a recruiter or an employer looks at your resume, looks at your cover letter, it has a strategy and it's evident, not just, well, I needed to throw information on a piece of paper and get it sent out quickly. And I hope that you're in the mood to do go on a scavenger hunt looking for the information that you want. Again, the next one is strategic, relevant, organized, and gets to the point. These folks look at probably over 50 resumes a day. So they'll set up a pile. I've done search committees and I know pile A had everything that the job description said and it was referenced. Pile B is missing some information. Pile C is average. Just, it's a resume, it's a cover letter, it's got words, and pile D is no way. Okay, guys, this is where B might not be your best friend. You left off information, you didn't even reference it. Because, and here's an example, we were doing a search, I had all these resumes in the piles, and the person who was over the search committee came to me and said, we have to make a decision by tomorrow morning or we're gonna lose the position. Give me your top five. Guess what? I never made it to the B pile. This isn't the way it always happens, but it could happen. We want you to be ready. We want you to have the documentation that is strategic, relevant, organized, and gets to the point. So strategic. That means that when they look at your documents, they can tell that it was well thought out. The information is placed in such a way that it's not like a scavenger hunt. Gee, your very first bullet point on the job description said that you wanted someone who was majoring in this degree and was gonna be graduating by this date. Well, I put education on the bottom and by the way, I'm giving you five pages because I think if I talk a lot, you're really going to like that. You're going to find out as we go further along why that's not a good idea. And I'm looking at a resume for critiquing right now that is six pages long. So I know people do, it's kind of like the English paper. How, how long can I stretch it out? And that's going to look like it's got a lot of content. Um, that's not your best plan. The bullet points are prioritized. That means that in one position or one experience, your, your most important bullet points are on the top, not you list off the general tasks and then you get down to, oh, and I saved the company $2,000 by doing a technology search that determined some software they were using was obsolete. That should have been the first bullet point. Also, there's evidence that you did your homework, you read the job description, you saw what they were looking for, and you researched the company. So researching the company could come up in your favor if, say, you participated in a group project that was related to the traffic situation in a town, and you are applying to work with the state for their transportation board. That was a class project, but it was still experience in researching the very same thing that this company is getting ready to do. So you can see how just that one little tidbit of information may put you closer to the A pile than someone else who thought, well, it was a class project, I didn't get paid for it, so therefore, mm, not even gonna mention it. So relevant, that means that your documents address either directly or indirectly the specifics that are on the job description. There's usually two categories, qualifications required and qualifications preferred. The qualifications required, that's pretty much going to determine um, how close you get to the A pile. Now, it could be that they're requiring something that you may not have work experience in, but you've got volunteer experience in. So instead of calling it a work history, you might call that category relevant experience and put under it the things that are relevant to that 
job, that position, which leads to the second bullet point. There's evidence the documents were tailored to that unique position. I get asked all the time, you mean I have to have more than one resume? Well, you can have a file that has all your information in it. And then when you're putting the resume together, you can pull that information forward. You kind of think about the relationship that you want to build with that company, with that agency, with that professional school. There's some information they don't really care to know, but there's other information that you might not think is relevant and you get to looking at it and it fits. So you can pull it over and include it. The organization of your resume, of your cover letter, you can almost hold it up and tell if organization's been practiced. Is it neat? How's the overall appearance? And I know that a lot of folks use templates and I'll tell you, that's great for your first draft. That's not great for your final submission. Remember, they look at over 50 a day and I'm being very um, slim when I say 50. Some look at 100 a day. But if you've got a template and you used a template, you're gonna look like the other 20 people who use the same template. So not, not your best friend. You've also lined up the sections neatly and you've selected and prioritized your bullet points and you proofed it. Don't tell somebody you pay attention to detail when you spelled attention wrong. And I know these are like your firstborn child and they're beautiful. You might hand them over to somebody who's going to look at it and tell you whether or not your child is cross-eyed and you need to get it some help. Also get to the point. Now here's where I said don't do six pages. Recruiters spend six seconds looking at a resume. They go down the center of the page and they focus on the first page unless the last item on the first page is interesting enough they want to see and what else. Sometimes that stuff that's on a second page doesn't even get looked at unless they're having to search to find out if you even have a college degree because you put education on the back on the bottom, not on the back, but you put education on the bottom of a second page. So here's some things that can take away from that. I'm on the highway. I'm going to spend six seconds. I'm going to start and I'm going to finish and have what I need. If you put things in two columns, we read left to right. Well, when you make something two columns, they've got a very short left to right all the way down, and then they start all over and go left to right all the way down. If you have boxes of information, it's kind of like stepping stones or playing hopscotch. You bounce from one box to the next box to the next box. That doesn't look as professional. Now, if you're a graphic design person, if you're an interior architecture person, you might put more effort into making the look of your resume or your cover letter a little more creative. Otherwise, if you do leave off the information they want to see, the pretty color didn't work. And color, if they're not willing to spend the money to print off in color your resume, your cover letter, then it's going to be printed off with black ink and lots of times color makes your information show up faint. I've seen some that were printed in color and then I print them in black ink to see what would it look like. I can't even read the contact information. Oops, how do we get in touch with you? Flowery adjectives. Um, if English is your speaking language and you say that you have well-developed English, that's probably something you didn't need to put on your resume. Unless as a job requirement, they wanted to be sure you had well-developed English. I haven't seen that, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So if you say that you've done this, they're going to assume because you put it on your resume, you did it well. Okay, so there's always a goal with these sessions that after you've heard the session, participated in the session, that you will be able to have a walk away with it, an application you can do. So my application challenge to you guys is to prepare a draft, notice I say a draft, of your cover letter and your resume. Now, if you go to our website, 
www.utc.edu slash career, you can also access our career uh, development handbook, which has some examples and samples about cover letters, resumes. There's not a template, but there are some in additional information to show you how to do it. And then with the critique, we help. Um, we critique more than once, so it's not a one and done in four years. Also, our services are provided for our alums even after you graduate. So you have us for life. We just don't stalk you. Related to this conversation, there's some other sessions with Mind the Gap that you might want to check out. Understanding transferable skills and how to talk about them on a resume, in an interview, whatever. Decoding and diagramming the job description. How do you figure out what they want to know? Navigating an applicant tracking system, how you keep track of the different places that you apply, and defining professional development. What does that mean when somebody says examples of professional development? Okay, guys, so that's the PowerPoint part. Now's the question part. Who's going to go first? You can put it in chat. You can say it out loud, whatever works best for you. Hi, um, I found this very useful and very um, interesting. Um, I know that these, I feel like I've had this presentation a few times throughout my time in school, but this one was very useful and to the point. So I guess that makes sense. <laughs> um, sorry, my question was, um, as far as like, um, I'm just graduated with a counseling degree. Um, and so applying for those jobs, there's a lot of opportunity to fill in the spaces of all the certifications and all the professional development and things like that. Would you recommend that that's better to just kind of have those documents in a file if asked about, um, kind of like you mentioned, or would that be something I should put front and center as far as relevant experience, um, things Is like this, that? Uh, you're graduating with a master's degree? Yes, okay. ma'am. Um, what you can do is you can do in the section that's education, then mm -hmm. still in education, but after you put your degrees, you can put certifications and okay. based on where you're applying. For example, if you are applying to work with adolescents, then you would mm -hmm. definitely want to put the certifications you have. Um, you could call it certifications and trainings. If, for example, you went to a training you're not specifically certified in, I would put certifications first and then the trainings as far as prioritizing. Um, but it, for example, if you got trained in CPR and you're applying to work at Valley Hospital, you might not need to put CPR on there unless the job description asked for it. Does that help? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Good luck. Okay, guys, she got you started. Who else has questions? I have one. Okay. Um, do you have any tips or common errors that you see in regard to cover letters? Um, yes. People forget to talk about the company. So Cover letter, your first paragraph is really short. It's kind of like you walk in a room and you're shaking hands. Hi, I'm Alex Blandon and I'm applying for the position of, which you posted wherever they posted. The second paragraph is kind of like a, you're looking for, I have, I'm looking for, you have. It's kind of that engagement piece. Lots of times people forget to talk about the company. So it kind of looks like, it's all about you when they also want to know how you're going to fit in with them and you haven't given them an example of even what they are. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am, it does. Thank okay. you. I was trying to think if there were, oh, another, Alex, another thing that I see sometimes is they will give a directive to the person who's reading. I'm going to call in two weeks to find out my status of my application. And I can tell you that if you called UTC's HR to find out a status, 
they would say you can go to the applicant system and it will show you that your uh, application is still being processed because well for example UGC sometimes it takes us months to get somebody hired for a position so what it's best to say at the last paragraph is I look forward to speaking with you at your earliest convenience I can be reached at give one phone number and one email address okay other questions guys how do you get back into a pool so like I uh, applied to uh, like a UNUM scholarship uh, opportunity, like my freshman or sophomore year. And I just, I feel like I wasn't um, as ready as I am now, you know, being a senior to jump into an opportunity like that. And now every time I try to, they like, uh, like automatically like emailed me and were like, hey, do this online interview. And I was super excited about it, but I wasn't ready for it. And now every time I put something in, they just ignore it. And then I'll try to email them and say something like, you know, uh, let me know if there's another opportunity that comes up and they'll just leave it uh, on red and they won't say anything. Um, so I don't know how to get back into like job opportunity pools once you've kind of like set yourself up as one of those people that I guess wouldn't seem super reliable. Do you know anyone at Unum, Megan? Yes, I actually, my friend works there and just got like a full-time position. Um, and I've put her on my references many times um, and they still. You might, at, you might see if she's comfortable asking someone how you can do that. Um, are you College of Business? No, no, I, uh, okay. I'm a STEM math major actually. Okay. I wanted to work more in the mathematics. I was going to say the reason, yeah, they've got the actuaries and everything. The reason I was uh, asking that is because Irene Hillman in the College of Business who's over the Career Center for the College of Business. She is conversing regularly with the uh, folks at Unum. So if you wanted to contact, reach out to Irene Hillman, H-I-L-L-M-A-N. I'm okay if you use my name and just say that you and I talked and I thought she would be a good person to give you some recommendations on that. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. My name can be used. I, even if I'm in trouble, I'm okay with it. And <laughs> I'm working, so don't worry. But no, Irene will be fine with that. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Now guys, I'm gonna remind you again my email is donna-cooper at utc.edu and like I said at the beginning, there are no stupid questions. Just the ones that you have and you didn't reach out with it. I don't have all the answers. I've been on the campus a few years and I know how to track people down for you. Um, so that's what I would do. I would respond to your email and say, I'm not sure about that, answer, that statement but let me reach out to somebody and see if they're the contact and then I'll send you their contact information. I won't even make you hunt all over campus, but Irene I know works very closely with Unum. Um, so that's why I had no problem with coming up with a name for you right away. Other questions? You. You're welcome. I do wanna remind you that we have three more days Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of Mind the Gap. You can go on the website for our Career Center and you can look at the different things. You'll also be getting emails that tell you about the different sessions that are coming up. We would love for you to take advantage of any and all. We also are recording, and I can pause recording now. Um, no, I can leave it going but we're recording everything so that you can even go back in and see things that you missed because you had to choose between two, which that's difficult, but it's also a wonderful thing on our part to know that we had things back to back that were that interesting. We, um, we're excited about the new semester. We're probably gonna have an interesting one just like last semester, but you know what? We're all still standing. We all made it through and a lot of employers are looking for people who can work remotely so i would recommend to you that you include on your resume or include in your cover letter how you made the transition to working remotely 
Okay, so when you go online to the Career Center, when you create your resume, what you do is send it to career at utc.edu. Chances are it's gonna to come to me. Um, if you wanna just go ahead and send it to me, Donna-Cooper at utc.edu. I will tell you there, um, there are already about 20 ahead of you for this semester. So it is not a turnaround that day kind of thing, but um, we definitely will review it, send it back to you, and then if you still have questions and want to set up a Zoom appointment, I'll be glad to do that with you. So it's one of those things that uh, it's not, again, like I said, it's not a one and done. We're with you all the way through your time at UTC and to infinity and beyond. Somebody said that in Toy Story. Um, we don't, we don't uh, stalk you but we have alums that reach out to us as they're getting promotions, as they're getting opportunities to go to grad school, things like that. We still help. So we help with the professional um, personal statements. We critique those. We practice mock interviews. We're all things jobs, pretty much. We just don't get you the job because you're awesome enough. You can get it. We just help you present in front. If you're not already on Handshake, I would say sign up for Handshake, www.joinhandshake.com. You can do that through our website. Your name is already there. Your profile is empty if you haven't been to it. That's where employers post the jobs. And you can designate who you want to hear from. You can designate what kind of job you want to hear from. When that type of position is posted, you get an email telling you it's been posted. So there's an opportunity to upload your resume on there. I would say make sure somebody looks at it before you do that, just in case. Uh, I did have a person who put in their cover letter, meaning to say I have attached my resume and they said I have attacked my resume. So another example, let somebody look at it. You've been slaving over it and it looks awesome, but it got attacked in the cover letter. So let us help with that. Any other questions, things? Okay, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to let you go so you can get ready for your next uh, event of the day. Just think of all that you've already accomplished by 12 o'clock today. Isn't that pretty amazing? And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Thursday and on Friday, if you have a chance. We'd love to see you again. Thank you so much. And you've made my day because I'm I screen shared with no trouble. Yay! It doesn't take much. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you and I look forward to hearing from you by email. Take care.